Hello and welcome to Be Powerful with Liz and Lee. It's a new day and we're so glad you're here. So you can expect to hear candid conversations on what it means to be powerful. Live authentically, live in the midst of ups and downs, productively and above all else joyfully. We are so thankful for you, our community of listeners, and we hope you enjoy today's show. Hi, Liz. Hi, Lee. We're back. We're back. Yay. And it's a brand new day. Brand new day, brand new podcast. Mm -hmm. We have a brand new name that Lee is dying to tell you. (laughs) Drum roll. Yeah. We're really excited to change the name of this podcast to be powerful with Liz and Lee. Yes. And And you may ask why, you know? Yeah, we're still Hilliard Studio Method, but we realized for the last two years, we've talked a lot about power and authenticity and truth telling and what the heck is be powerful anyway. So we're going to go really deeply and excitingly and have a really fun time with really letting that be the theme of every one of our podcasts. So buckle up. Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. So you'll see the look is a little bit different. The name is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But as you said, we're still going to try to deliver kind of the truest of ourselves. There's no there's nobody best else. version. Right? There's no, you know, we would love to come on here and be somebody else, but we've learned that that doesn't really work for us now, doesn't does it? Work. Doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, you're going to see us in the workout that we did what a couple of weeks not a couple of, a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> a couple of hours ago, and so we're not going to be glammed out here. We're just going to be truth telling, just like we always are, and. Uh, I'm excited. Let's get rolling. Me too. You can find us same places wherever you get your podcast as well as YouTube. But look who's excited. I'm so excited to be on YouTube. This is going to be fun. I know. So, I mean, not only can you listen, you can watch us, which, Mm. wow, I'm not sure. (laughs) Like we needed to give you more venues. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. Let's do it. And so we're starting out this podcast in our um, COVID cafe. Oh, I know. Yeah. The glory days. And that's really why we started a podcast in the very first place. It was the beginning of COVID. We wanted to connect with our clients who we weren't seeing. We wanted to talk about our lives, our relationship, and just kind of see where it went. And we appreciate everybody listening and giving us feedback and telling us, for the most part, to keep going. But hopefully you're still listening. And now we just, we got to know where we want to go and what's important to us. And as a community, you started with us, you all, and we're still together. We have no uh, (laughs) plans not to be together. Um, And I feel like we have to remember how important this community is. Mm -hmm. And and that, again, is why the the change in title. And that, again, is why we're sort of sitting in this new room, too. Mm -hmm. It's a new day. Um, COVID will always be with us, but we are living lives now. And I think we've all come through this with a whole big dose of reality right? and a whole new lease on owning ourselves and standing and, and working from our power. And if we haven't already done that, we're aware of it. And, Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. And as they say, once you know something, you can't unknow it. Right. 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 Well, and we've just talked about a lot kind of what matters, right? right? All that shake out of what we find important and meaningful to us and how we spend our valuable time. Yeah. All right. So let's get going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would like to first state that if I sound funny, we were laughing because I can't even say Liz without (laughs) practically lisping right now. I got Invisalign four days ago (laughs) and I'm getting used to talking on it with it in um, because I'm not going to take it out when we podcast because that is an hour wasted of the two hours that I have reserved for eating and drinking. And so you're going to hear me with this in. Yeah. And you know, I would never, ever make fun of me, make fun of you, uh, never. except <laughs> all the time. this is really, really fun. Thank so you. I think you're doing really well though. Yeah. You've got, I think you look good already too. You, you know, I was really disappointed when you did not come home with the braces and the headgear like I had at 14, mm-hmm. but you know, you do, you've got your Invisalign going on with, mm-hmm. uh, Tell them who your doctor is. Uh, Give him a shout. Lineberger, hello. Yeah, he's good. Here in Charlotte. Adrian Lineberger's my dentist. Matt Lineberger is my orthodontist. <laughs> All Y'all, the family. They are, no joke, super cool office, super good at what they do, good energy. I like it. I'll be in these puppies for 
least a year. I can't um, wait. It's already it been right. fun. Yeah. 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 So, so anyway, just a, you know, full disclosure. Stand in your power, Lee. Just, you know, right? get on in there. I'm You're scared. Yeah. Helping our listeners right. get through their fears. That's right. You know, it's, it's cool. I think there's no uh, wrong time to take care of your dental health, said the <laughs> dental hygienist from 1978. Um, but yeah, no, it's true. I'm glad you're doing it. Thanks so much. And you sound good to me. Right. But if you start sounding bad, you know I won't bring it up except a few times. So <laughs> but here's hoping. Yes. Here's hoping. So where do you want to start with today? Well, I mean, I think that's a very small example of a good segue into change. We're changing the name of the podcast, a little bit of the image and how we we technically roll it. And so let's talk about approaching change in your life and how it can be challenging, how you can embrace it. Um and then, and how you can run away from it exactly, <laughs> and kind of what you can take away from it. Sure, sure. And were and you cold earlier? Because it just got hot. No, I just tr- got cold. Okay, we always have these discussions I know. too. So really, nothing's really changed. No, not we at just all. changed rooms, and we have a video. But maybe that's uh, why I I'm hot. It down. I turned it down to seventy. Mm. It was seventy. Whopping, <laughs> chilly seventy. <laughs> Okay. Just and I used to, I'm wearing my jacket from the studio too. I'm like, I'm feeling. Pro- if I'm comfortable, that means you're hot. But we all know that now. So I think the, some of the reasons we find our, I know I find myself and maybe other you guys do too, is the more I avoid mm. the, the uncomfortableness of the thing I need to look at mm-hmm. and I need to be accountable for, or that problem that I just keep going, it will work itself out. The bigger it gets and the worse it gets and the and the more it keeps coming back. Right. Is that really a problem for you? Because that feels more my you know, personality. It, it, I'm not walking on water, but <laughs> no, of course it is. I mean, I like to hit, to hit things uh, head on. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's to a fault, to a point where I know that sometimes I've made people feel uncomfortable. Sure. And in, including you, including oh. my family, because I'm more of a bull in a china shop when it does come to dealing with a subject that I see is very uncomfortable. But it's... But it has served me well. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. that said, it's also, there are things in my life I just want to avoid because I, you know, I don't want to hurt someone else or I, I, that's a good reason. Yeah. It's mostly, I don't want to hurt others. Mm -hmm. Um, Then what makes you think about that and either choose to bring it up, mm -hmm. even if it causes us hurt or to hold on to it because you you want to avoid it? Have you ever been in the band class when I'm teaching it and I call it, I say rip the bandaid off? I mean, oh. because... I thought you meant like an instrumental band. I was like, no, no, no. no. The band <laughs> class at Hilliard Bands. Studio Method. Um, rip the bandaid off. Um, oh. It's, to me, I just know that the, as soon as you're accountable for your feelings, and those feelings can be so... Sometimes I'll feel like, oh, that's a, that's a silly feeling. It's stupid. Mm-hmm. What, or it's not worthy of my attention. Um, but if I tangle with it immediately, it of course is not a problem. And I find sometimes that I, that I embarrassingly or, um, you know, fearfully go to someone else or to you or to whatever. It's generally a, a relationship problem for me. Mm-hmm. I think it is for everybody, many people. As your relationships are a challenge and you want things to run smoothly, but nothing, nothing stays on the same level. Uh, if you're not continuously evolving and changing in your relationship with yourself and with your friend or your lover or your partner, then you are stagnant and and sort of like starting to die. Like right. that relationship is starting to die. So the uncomfortableness of change is also the beauty of it. Right. Uh, finding that uh, finding a way to live in discomfort is living energetically and creatively. And joyfully, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's the outcome. So once you kind of jump off that mm-hmm. ledge or cliff or whatever and begin to fly, then yeah. that's what you're saying is that feeling of reward that for you comes right in that joy and creativity. And you're more like in the flow of your own self. Right. Um, I practice a very small amount, but some, do you, I mean, it's hard to spend time with yourself, but I've found Mm -hmm. that if I spend enough time with myself and I, even a small amount of meditation and I try to align myself with my higher self, which I have a visual of it. Everyone probably has a different visual. You can call it God. You can call it higher self. Um, I think a lot of 
religion and praying right. is great, but there's also silence. Sometimes God really needs you to shut up and listen, <laughs> right? So uh, I just find, I call it my alignment with okay. my higher self. And and just sort of being quiet, which is impossible. So I do things that help me be quiet, like deep breathing. And that that's a good thing to do no matter what. If you're kind of sure. losing your mind or having a, really and truly, having a issue, like I don't know what to do mm-hmm. here. I do breathing. I, I breathe in, breathe out. At night when I can't sleep, I do deep breathing exercises. And they work. Mm-hmm. The body releases the tension and the anxiety that's holding and it works. And so anyway, back to that. Well, I want to segue real quick into that. It doesn't have to be like a breathing exercise or something specific Mm -hmm. because it made me think of when I tuck my son in at night. Yeah. He's 15, but I hug him good night. We just sit there for a minute. We always tend to take just like three deep breaths and whether or not anything's said or not, and it's not on some count and whatever, but it's just that, (sighs) ah, That's a really and it beautiful just, it, thing. It's so simple, but it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, so anyway. I love that. I love that. And sort of teaching him that too. Right. Yeah. I can't do it with my daughter. She, that, that's too close. <laughs> We'd be and then the, too close to one another. <laughs> and that's just the difference in humans. Exactly. So in relationship with mm-hmm. different people. And to honor that and find your space mm-hmm. with each person differently. It's interesting. We were on vacation. So we'll take a little segue. We were on vacation yeah. last week. It was really great. It, Speaking it, of really deep breaths. <laughs> deep breaths. And we were, um, we were sort of holding on to each other one day on the beach. And Lee said, if you can give me this for <laughs> about five minutes a day, all of those other things that come up will be okay. And that yeah. was, I listened. Thank you. And that's important. And mm-hmm. that's really listening to your partner or your or your friend or your love and honoring that you don't, that's not the way you do it. Right. But that's the right. way she does it. And so far, we've been here for a week. <laughs> yeah. I think I've got it in every day. <laughs> and we've gotten it in. Yeah. And so I mean, it doesn't have to be. Right. So. You're right. It's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> there she goes. It doesn't have to be something that you even have to put on the calendar it you can make it as simple Mm -hmm. as you want you can also make everything as complicated as you want but for me you are a physical presence that I feel more settled and calm when I am near to you and if we can hug or physically touch like even if you just put your hand on me then it's like okay it just brings me back down I don't need a lot of time with it I'll take as much as you want to give (laughs) but Anyway, thanks for that. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. so that's just an example, mm-hmm. you know. So what do, what's yours? What do I do for you? Um, <laughs> what oh do you gosh. need? I mean, now we're going, we're not, please, please don't bring up that love language stuff, right? You said it. I'm not doing it. I don't, I, you know, the whole book, I didn't read it, but everybody else I'm in good. the world has we read it. We don't that. need to talk about it at no, all. My love language, okay, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, is literally um, all of the above, is right. really well, I, let's change it. Here, I vote we change it. Now that the podcast is called Be Powerful with Liz and Lee, maybe it's that empowering thing that you need. What empowers you to feel like your best self in a day or a week or a month before you lose it? Two things. Okay. The alignment with my higher mm-hmm. self and relationship with the people I love. Mm. I must check in. And, it, and there's a difference between neediness right. and connection. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a fine line too. You don't sure. want to be dependent on another human to fill your needs. Mm-hmm. But I find if I can connect on any level, say with my daughter, then I'm good to go for the day. Uh, same, and especially, and of course with you, mm-hmm. um, the people that you depend on to be in your life. And you depend on them not for anything they give you, bring you, but there's just that connection that you were, I believe we were born in with or Mm -hmm. something. So those are the two things I have to have. To be powerful, it really starts with me. I I have to own that I'm feeling whatever emotion I am. I mean, if you're feeling jealous, if you're feeling an embarrassing, I I Mm -hmm. always think those emotions are so embarrassing, especially when you get to be my age and (laughs) you've gone through the things we've all gone through, the two of us, and even with my family and my ex-husband and all those Mm -hmm. things. uh, For me to even have such a low vibrational uh, emotion is embarrassing. 
right? That's interesting. Um, but I do. I experience all the lower emotional things, and probably on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So those are the ones that I, I breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe it in, acknowledge it, be accountable for that, say, jealousy or negative right. feeling. And then I exhale it out. And I actually visualize particles of it breaking up and going into light, into the sky. Right. Actually, I'm a very visual, visual human. But it's the whole blessed it and let it go concept exactly. that we've talked about before. And I find that that really works. Now, it might come back in literally five minutes or less. Mm-hmm. but And then you got to really pay attention to it. And uh, if you need help outside of yourself, then you get help outside of yourself. Right. Uh, therapies are, are a good idea. And you know we love to talk about things like the patriarchy and religion, but I really, and we will a lot on this podcast, (laughs) but I want to hesitate to say praying about it is a great idea, Mm -hmm. but be aware that God really wants you to do this yourself. Right. (laughs) It's a good point. I mean, we're here with a real lot of goodness right here. Right. And so do you mean kind of turning that prayer into action? No, I mean, turning it into yourself, not action. Okay. Eventually action. First of all, you acknowledge it, you breathe it, you bless it, you let it go, Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. you notice where it is. Mm -hmm. Has it disappeared? Is it not? Is there more? And, and, you know, if you need to say whatever religious thing you have about it, that's Mm -hmm. great. But handing it over, maybe to God, Ah. a lot of people say, I'm sure is a, to me, God's busy, you know, (laughs) I'm... I'm going to, I'm going to hand it, well, maybe that is God to the universe and and watch right. it just sort of flower into something more positive than what I had. So it's, I like I, we, we do sort of a mixture of religion, Buddhism, <laughs> uh, pseudo psychology, <laughs> you know, whatever. Pretty much. It's sort of the Liz and Lee, um, treatise on human behavior that, you know, interesting the way we talk sometimes. I like that. Yeah. Feel a little imposterish at this point. Well, you should be about, because we literally, we always talk outside of our shoes. We, we do, literally but never it's through have a, <laughs> our experience. And I think that's what's valuable about every human being that, that you can look for towards other people mm-hmm. for guidance, for, mm-hmm. you know, support, whatever it is, but that, that knowing within yourself. Yeah really is where it comes from. But also, you know, when we changed the name of the podcast, I'm like, ooh, Be Powerful's your mantra. Now my name's tagged on to it. So it's yours too. Well, it's everybody's. That's why it's on the wall. Go. It's not mine. There you go. It's my reminder to me. It's not me telling you. It's my remi- It's on the wall because it's a reminder to me to look up and remember I am powerful. Right. It's a reminder to every new or older person that's been in that class at Hilliard Studio Method, Mm -hmm. that's why it's so bold. It's like, be yourself. You are powerful. Right. You are worthy. And and I had a client come up to me one day, and right after we put, we opened the studio a few years ago, and she said, oh, this is great. Put lots of things up on the wall. Like, be truthful, be authentic. But that's what it means. Exactly. Be powerful is owning your truth, walking the earth in your own authenticity, knowing that you are not, you know, you're fallible. You are in right. human form. Right. And that's also a fun thing in human form. I think mm. we, I think we downplay human form a lot. I know religion does. I think human form is one of the most fun things my spirit's ever done. <laughs> you're having a good time. Yeah. On whatever go round <laughs> yeah, this is for go you. Around. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that goes circles right back exactly to change. We're fallible. Everything is always changing. And so how are you going to approach it? And to listen to those things that need to change within yourself or in your life and how that makes you feel mm-hmm. and then what you're going to do with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, in your case, you're going to have really straight teeth. <laughs> She's been in lots of pain. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of pain. It's not Yeah, bad. the teeth. You know, it's just it's a small reminder, you know? Right. It's a small right. reminder. Those when shifts. you're working out, it's the change in your body. It's mm-hmm. like we did an interview with a dermatologist the other day, and she said, you know, what's the thing about working out? And went, well, first of all, it's, it's, it's flexing the muscles of the body. Mm-hmm. And, the, bo- and the, the emotions and the mental state you're in listen to your body. If you're slouching, you're sitting on your sofa and you're watching, yeah, I know, let's sit up straight, <laughs> and, you know, watching TV and, you know, munching on some Cheetos. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you're, that's how you're going to feel. Yeah. And that's going direct. It's a direct conduit. But it's also, um, so the, the working out of the body is sort of a, the endorphins are naturally, the, the hormones are naturally changed when you move your body. And, and it doesn't matter if you would come to kill your tsunami method or not. But moving your body changes your emotions and it changes your mind. And to your point in the meditative part of being still, Mm -hmm. there are moments in the workout, we go fast, but there are still moments. And those are generally, I think, the hardest moments for people. They are for me. You know, once you do start to move to hold your body still and embrace all the things that are going on in there, the shake that you feel physically, the tension that you feel physically, and then how that reminds you of the shakes and the tensions in your mind and your soul, you know, when you can exhale that physical tension out, Mm -hmm. I think you begin to exhale that mental, emotional, spiritual tension out and you get to reset. So there's the beauty Mm -hmm. of that change. Yeah. So, and we have, and we're going to talk about the, I guess we're going to talk about the workout in a minute because I had somebody go, oh, I want to come in, but I want to get in shape. This is their typical thing. I'm coming out of my jacket. It's hot. It is hot in here. (laughs) Um, people don't want to come in because they want to get in shape before they come uh, in. Yeah, you know? um, I have something to say about that. Uh, no way. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I want you to be uncomfortable. I mean, are we right? You know, can we say this a thousand ways? Your body being uncomfortable will serve you well. Your emotions being uncomfortable will serve you mm-hmm. well. You not understanding a chapter in a book you're reading and looking into it will serve you well. So whatever you're doing in your discomfort zone always serves you well. Right. And I also believe and know in my gut that it starts with the physical. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're spiritual beings walking right. in a physical body, but we're very physical. Let's not pretend we're not. Yeah. And um, so, I mean, if you're afraid, just literally going into a workout, whether it's Hilliard Studio Method or another workout or you know, going, well, it's anything. So look, we've got a thousand hard things we have to do in a day. Yeah. What are we going to do? Avoid them all? Like, are we not going to do any of them? No. And so you have to do one small hard thing and then you'll go, I got it. The next hard thing until it's like a hard, hard thing. And you realize you just get through it. But it, it, and I've noticed that the more you can do that hard thing, Mm -hmm. the more they come at you, it's sort of like you challenge yourself. Absolutely. And you can, and so more come at you, but then also the other flip side of that coin is even though they're coming at you faster and more, you also are processing them and able Mm -hmm. to just, you know, line up with your alignment Mm -hmm. and it's not a problem. Right. (laughs) And it becomes no problem. I mean, well, not every time, Yeah, I mean, but it's a practice of anything. I mean, the more you practice the habit of getting through a difficult, whatever, yeah. the easier it is the next time. I mean, look at our relationship. Like I'm a completely different person, the way I handle lots of life before you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to <laughs> that say this. You really said that well, I like that. Yeah. I mean, going through a divorce, coming into our relationship. Would you say that was your hardest thing you've ever done? What's the hard? It was yeah, a, for sure. Yeah. Okay. For Keep sure. Going. Um, but then you're, you're changing in order to get to your most authentic self. So therefore then I was, and so it's like, then I can happily approach more things that are challenging knowing, well, this is who I am. I'm not living in this shell of, ah, shoulda, coulda, woulda. And then you, you really can't approach life. I'm so proud with of you. intention and meaning. You know why? Why? Because I remember being on a boat with you, <laughs> with Meg and Clary in the Caribbean, and we weren't us. We weren't yeah, yeah, even yeah. considering us. We were all heterosexual human beings having a great girls' weekend. And you started telling me things about your marriage, and I'm, I won't go into that. That's not anybody's business, but you. And I thought to myself, and then I said it out loud because I am the bull in the china shop. <laughs> wow, you are really stuck, aren't you? You're probably gonna be living with this issue yep the rest of your life mm-hmm. and I think I don't think you disagreed with that no so I I mean and that there was no like oh you literally you should really you should get out of that but it no, was more like just, wow yeah. you are really in a tough place here and all the all the signs say you should just suck it up yep. buckle down keep your head down and just get through it mm-hmm and 
you chose not to do that. You chose to flip the table. Right. And with the knowledge and fear that it could disrupt literally everybody in your life. Right. And I, I'm, and look at you today. Mm. Look how happy people are around you. Right. And I mean, that's making choices the best you can in those moments of knowing that gut internal feeling of what you need to do for your own soul and staying with that and knowing that no matter how hard it is, whatever changes are going to happen, it's worth it. And so to get but it you took there. a couple of like tries. Oh, yeah. You're not going to go, okay, good. I'm, I'm courageous now. Exactly. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Right? There's a difference between, oh, my teeth are crooked. Let's make a change and get Invisalign. Yeah. <laughs> and wow, not feeling like my most authentic self. Let's get divorced and get into a same sex relationship with my boss. Awesome. <laughs> Different levels of change. Always. Yeah. But same process. Same process. Same process. Um, and so it takes a lot of courage. And so those small courages mm-hmm. that occur when you maybe in a relationship with a friend say that you go, I'm going to stand up and today when they make a racial slur, I'm going to say, mm. I'm sorry, I can no longer do that or set a boundary. These are small courages that maybe your friend will be offended of and then maybe she won't or he won't and they'll actually respect you. Right. And then they'll maybe question themselves or maybe, or maybe they'll go, well, F you, I'm out of here. There you got it. Yeah. And and so when you make a change, be ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, the price is high. The reward, reward is, is great, great, she says. And it doesn't mean there are things that change that are sad and you learn yeah. to, to deal with. I mean, you know, different people that were in my life before are not now. And, you know, life has these different, I guess, seasons. I hate saying that. No, it does. And different Good people in your it. life for different reasons. If I'm sad about anything, it would be going through changes and not being um, available for other people Mm -hmm. when you go through your hardest time. So if, you know, two people aren't both doing the work and your friendship changes, then... But don't you you find that... Go ahead. But don't you find that since you and I went through this change, and I'm going to stick with you for a minute, since you went through this change, since you made that decision and you felt the exclusion and the hurt and the pain of being shunned mm-hmm. by certain people, mm-hmm. right? It's just going to happen, period. Yeah. If you get a divorce or any of those things, people are going to disagree and you're going to find out really quick what's real and what's not real. And sometimes what you think is a really mm-hmm. re- great relationship with someone isn't really a great mm-hmm. relationship. So, But what I believe you found out, at least I personally did for me, was such compassion. Yeah, I don't have to agree with what change you're going through. I just want to give you compassion and love and support. Mm -hmm. And the people that I think, okay, now I'll go back to me because I was going to ask you this, but the people that came to me during this, during that, those trauma days where you and I were coming out and doing these things and people were just outraged as I I would have been too, in many ways by other people like, what? Right. But then continued the outrage into the slinging of the mud and the, you know, the bad things. Then people I didn't even know came out to me and said, you know, I'm a, I'm a church-going, white, privileged woman, and I disagree with every single thing you are doing in your life, but I, I'm here in love, and I'm here in support. Mm. So those lessons were the ones I take away. 100%. Anytime you go through your own struggle and challenge, you know, and come out the other side, you're hyper aware, Mm -hmm. obviously, of the struggles that everyone goes through and how you're going to treat them in your own mind and soul. I mean, what is the point of spending negative energy in your own soul and mind about someone else's? Right. But but more important, what is the point of life? If you just put your head down, suck it up, and go through it. If you're waiting on your heavenly father to reward you in heaven, he's going to laugh you in the face. I mean, sorry. I went right straight That's, at it. But I mean, I, I, we or, are responsible there, it's right It's more here. than that, right? Yeah. It's more than... What's the reward? Just what is the you're reward? you're living life for a God yeah. in a heaven Or maybe you. you're living life for your children. Oh, as soon exactly. as my children... I cannot tell you the amount because I'm I've been living since you know Moses, but 
I can't tell you the amount she of never people exaggerate. that got divorced as soon as mm-hmm. Clary and her crowd went to college. Mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa, I thought they had a great marriage mm-hmm. and they're all divorcing. What's going on? And they thought that was cool. That wasn't cool. I mean, many of those teenage children were like, hey, we really wish you'd have done this before. Mm-hmm. Well, again, I mean, you know? that's not to to judge them and say... No, I, I, that was judgy. Sorry. Yeah, but the to your point, right? you know, why people stick in to something that's not working for them because they're just trying to do because the best they're afraid. for other people and they're afraid. They're afraid. And if you want to do the best for your children, do the best for your ex-partner, if it's going to be an ex-partner, then you take care of yourself first. That is not narcissistic. That is taking care to make sure that you are aligned with your higher self, that you are doing what you were put on this earth to do, mm-hmm. and knowing that your path is going to diverge and change as you grow. And because you made a commitment, sometimes you have to relook at that. And that is why, you know, we have marriage counselors or. Right. And that's know. what I was going to say. I'm never, ever going to sit here and ever just say you should get a divorce. I mean, it's not a pretty thing to go through. The point is to find a way to communicate with yourself and then with the other person, any other person you're dealing with in whatever realm it is, your child, your boss, your friend, your partner. Right. Getting another job. And let's just reiterate that again, because if we sounded like we were preaching divorce, then no, we are not preaching a divorce (laughs) because we would really like to be together the rest of our lives. Exactly. Correct? So we will do the things that, that it, it takes, takes and be accountable for those changes that come our way. and But with the knowledge that we will never compromise our mm-hmm. own humanity mm-hmm. for another. You do not compromise who you are yeah. for another. And that is the lesson you teach not only your children and your partner at the time, but you also uh, teach the people watching and so if there's a, if there's anything that the people that can ex- at least accept the fact that some people are, you know, have d- let's say us, okay. if you can accept me and Lee, then you know that we have made lots of mistakes, that we have um, made changes, and you're like, how in the world did you do that? But it all was for the betterment of ourselves and for the people around us. Exactly. There's no reason for anybody to be living a lie. It's more comfortable, right? <laughs> and, uh, but now there's a there's a joy that we didn't have before. Exactly. And it changes everything. I mean, for instance, I feel like I'm a much better instructor mm-hmm. because I'm not coming in every day with all these weights on my shoulder that make me feel like I'm not walking this path that I should be. I know where I am, how I'm going forward, what I want to get out of the day. And so I'm able to freely give to other people. Mm -hmm. And that just feels so much better. And it is hard, hard, hard to face it and begin to make a change when you need to. So it's that start small. Yep. And then you feel so much better. Hold that plank for a minute. And you're like, oh, I can do this again. Yeah. I mean, it really is. We do One like to we do like to incorporate talking the workout with this. The workout is just like this. Absolutely. Life is like a fifty minute hill your ten minute <laughs> workout. You're like, I've uh, got this. And you're like, I so don't, don't have, have this. this. And I'm in pain. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah, it's a good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So, um, yeah, so that's it. Yeah. So I, think I mean, obviously our example is, uh, is the easiest to go back to our relationship, but is there anything else for you that you think of in your life that's like, oh, that was a huge change and either I approached it well and it went well or I didn't or I didn't make the change. Mm. Like, can you look back oh, and go? Yeah. And they, and Absolutely. Um, I just wish I was a quicker learner. I, I'm a, you know, I think we're all slow learners on our hardest problems. Yeah. Um, and, and it takes some of us a long time, like me, to even recognize them. Like mm-hmm. I didn't even see them, but it kept slapping me in the face. Right. So if something keeps slapping you in the face, if you know, if every time you're in a relationship and you're disappointed, then you're in the wrong relationship, right? <laughs> um, perhaps you should choose differently. <laughs> right. Or you need to look at what you're doing. Like, are you putting yourself out there there in a way that isn't actually yourself? So you right. can't ever create a relationship on a solid yeah. foundation. I but, was, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I you really would not interrupt you this time. Go. <laughs> you weren't interrupting me. We just went at the same time. I was going to say, I heard a physicist 
I said that with Invisalign that was, and pretty she well. She did. That was really <laughs> that well. That was pretty good. Well done. Um, on another podcast, and it was simply saying how we all have our strengths and weaknesses and we'll say things like, oh, I could never do X, Y, Z. I'm terrible at math. Could never be a physicist kind of thing. And his point was, everybody can. It just takes some people longer. Right. So to your point about you're not a fast learner, like it doesn't mean you can't learn it. It just means, do you want to put forth the energy to do it? And it's going to take you a hot second. And the reward is so great. So great. You get to be a physicist. Right. Or you get to be like me and Lee and just massively happy in life. Boom. I mean, you know, Mm. gosh, the world is turning sideways these days. And we walk joyfully through Mm -hmm. life together and and on our own knowing that there is pain and suffering all around us, but that doesn't mean we're blind to it. We're just more open to it. Right. And more more inclined to fill it with compassion mm-hmm. and understanding and action and joy. Right. And I think that's, if you're not living so that you get you give yourself goosebumps almost on a daily basis. Jim Valvano once said when he got cancer, he said, if you don't cry once a day, you're mm. not a fully living human. Mm. I've always remembered that. And I'll go for days and not cry, and then I'll cry and I'll go, Need it yeah, time. there it you're is. You're right, Jim. <laughs> you, you're a coach for state, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm a big Carolina fan. But um, no, he, that was such a great, that is. a wise thing that stuck to me. Meaning also just get in it. Don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. Open your heart. Be vulnerable. Do all those things. To me, being vulnerable is the same as being powerful, period. Exactly. Same thing. So you might come in to, to me or I might come in there and I'm just a ball of mess. And it happens, right? Mm-hmm. And that ball of mess is such a great place because it's, mm-hmm. the, it's the Play-Doh on the ground it's all, or whatever, like, like Aubrey Slime, my granddaughter's <laughs> slime. <laughs> the and slime then you get phase. to form it into something. I mean, yeah. you, when you go into a mess, then you're like, ah, well, let me pick up these pieces and see what I can what create. Can I make? That's when you're, you can get real creative. I love that. Yeah. So. And that's what we're going to try to do. I, yeah. I think you're a quicker learn about being vulnerable and for me, it takes a hot second, but that's what I'm here to do with you, which feels safe. Um, we'll keep the hugging up. Where, well, that's right. We'll just hug at the end of every episode for a few minutes. Everybody hug someone you're near. Well, no, I think we have to do it before the episode starts. Oh, that's probably a good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, well wait, that was fun. Before we go. What, what, what? Now, before we go, when is this podcast coming out? Oh, it's coming out, okay, after, okay, the game. Yeah, you can't talk we about can't that. We can't talk about the game. Okay. <laughs> Shoot, I really wanted to. Yeah. But anyway, go Heels. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Always. So I think, yeah, I think we sort of got a good groundwork for where we're going mm-hmm. with this podcast. And we'd love to hear from you guys, like, if you want us to go somewhere else, like, to hell. I'm just kidding. I mean, <laughs> no, don't just. Uh, it if did you sound like to, a place. Yeah. Where you want to send us on vacation. Yeah. Whatever. We want this to be interactive. Mm-hmm. And um, we'll have some guests come on right. for a change. You know, we, we haven't done that in a long time. We're also going to plan to do it a weekly podcast. Yeah. So be ready for that. Woo. Um, <clears throat> no, we love your input, your feedback positive, negative, whichever way. Mm-hmm. We're willing to change. And then we were talking to our, our producer and it was like, you know, she goes, well, are there questions that you're going to be upset with if you get them and people ask no. them? And I'm, I literally can't think of one question that would upset me. Not one. You're an open book. I'm an open book. That's good. Lee, maybe not so much. <laughs> There's a little lock in the end of mine that hangs off yeah. every now and then, but so, we'll see. Yeah. So welcome <sighs> and welcome. And we will see you guys um, next week. Yeah. On our Be Powerful podcast. Thanks for listening to us today, wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, you can now find our podcast on YouTube. Yeah. If you liked it, please share, rate, and review. We love five stars. And we hope you'll work out with us online or in studio at hilliardstudiomethod.com.